Is the M777 155mm howitzer still relevant? The US Army certainly seems to think it still has a place on today's battlefield and recently announced that as part of a $50 million agreement with UK defence contractor BAE Systems, it has begun the process of restarting production of this trusty and well-regarded artillery piece. Production of the M777 originally started in 1987, but ceased almost 10 years ago in November 2013. The new contract will once again see BAE systems producing the major titanium structures which form the basis of the gun, and it is anticipated that first deliveries will be due in 2025. However, the announcement comes at a time when some tough lessons are being learned by Ukrainian gun crews using US donated 777s in the ongoing war against their Russian aggressors. This has prompted a critical evaluation of military strategy, and one which raises the question, is the M777 the best choice for modern artillery requirements? Celebrated for its combat effectiveness in the Middle East and various other theatres of operation, the 777 boasts a commendable track record, with thousands of rounds downrange in combat. However, recent experience in Ukraine has highlighted that traditional artillery is now at risk from counter-attack when pitted against near-peer adversaries. This is because countries such as Russia and China now equip their armies with counter-battery radar systems that can catch slower towed artillery before they can pack up and move to their next position, emphasising the need for ever more agile weaponry. The best defence against such counter-battery fire is proving to be the ability to fire and then quickly move on, swiftly traversing the battlefield to a new firing position in an approach known as shoot and scoot. This approach represents a strategic dilemma, weighing traditional towed artillery against some of the alternative artillery options that, based on evidence from the ongoing war in Ukraine, may actually be better suited to meet the demands of modern warfare. Currently, over in the US, the Army's artillery branch employs two types of howitzers, towed and tracked. The tracked variant, the M109 Paladin, is a turreted, self-propelled 155mm howitzer, First introduced in the early 1960s, it saw its combat debut in Vietnam with around 200 vehicles deployed there in 1966. The howitzer is mounted on a heavily armoured chassis with tank tracks and has been upgraded a number of times, most recently to the M109A7 variant. The towed versions currently in use are the M119 lightweight 105mm howitzer and the aforementioned M777. But in this video we'll be focusing only on the heavier 155mm howitzers in the context of the production restart of the M777. As with the Paladin, the M777 also features a 155mm gun, but mounted on a lightweight wheeled gun mount, which is towed by a truck known as a prime mover from one location to another. Typically Paladins are deployed with the heavy armoured brigades, while the lighter 777s serve with light infantry, airborne, air assault, mountain and striker brigades. The 777-towed howitzer can launch a 95-pound shell containing 14.6 pounds of Comp B explosives up to 15 miles, or even farther using range-extending technology. It can sustain this rate of fire twice per minute indefinitely, or up to four times per minute for two minutes during emergencies, which is similar to the Paladin in both its range and rate of fire. The main need for two different guns stems from differences in weight and mobility. 
the 777 weighs just 4.2 tonnes, in part due to the use of lightweight titanium and can be carried by aircraft like the C-130J Super Hercules, the V-22 Osprey, the CH-53E Super Stallion and the CH-47 Chinook. However, when on the ground, a truck must pull it via a trailer hitch, and a 777 can only bounce along cross-country terrain as well as its tow truck can, which is not that well. Also, because it's so light, it's completely unarmoured, leaving both the gun and its crew exposed to enemy fire. In contrast, the Paladin weighs in at 38 tonnes and can only be carried in the air by the big boys, the C-17 and the C-5M transport planes. But thanks to its tracks, on the ground it has far better cross-country performance, and the gun and its crew enjoy the protection of armour against small arms fire and artillery shrapnel. Because the Paladin rolls with 70-ton tanks that also can't be lifted by helicopters, the vehicle's near 40-ton mass isn't so much of a limiting factor due to the company that it keeps, and so ultimately its weight is less of a concern. Interestingly, with NATO's continued support for Ukraine in the ongoing conflict with Russia, both the M777 and the M109 howitzers are seen as two of the weapons vital in repelling their enemy. Figures show that there are already some 138 777s and 164 Paladins operating in Ukraine, donated by various NATO members. This figure is also likely to increase, especially if NATO can supply Ukraine with the ammunition necessary to make these weapons count. For further updates on these advancements in upcoming videos, remember to subscribe to my channel and hit the notifications bell so that you don't miss out. So now that we have an overview of these weapons, what is counter-battery fire and what does it mean on today's battlefield? Well, throughout history, artillery's primary function has been to engage enemy infantry, with little concern for enemy artillery, which was often too far away to locate and too difficult to hit. However, the landscape changed in the 20th century with the advent of advanced counter-battery technology. Today, anti-battery artillery units utilise sophisticated systems like the American AN-TPQ-36 Firefinder radar and the Russian Zupark 1 and 2 systems to detect enemy artillery projectiles in flight and, using ballistics, pinpoint their point of origin. With this technology, artillery has suddenly become much more dangerous to other artillery. While larger conflicts historically drove the development of counter-battery tactics, recent decades has seen this aspect of warfare receive less attention. However, as a result of the deployment of weapons like the 777 in Ukraine, it has now highlighted their vulnerability to Russian counter-battery fire. To put this threat into perspective, a good artillery counter-battery team can detect incoming artillery and fire on the shooter's position, sending shells into the air before the initial barrage even reaches its target. In 2023, a Royal United Services Institute report stated that Russian artillery operating in Ukraine can complete a counter-battery mission in as little as three minutes. And this is where we start to see the risks that come from using weapons such as the 777. Unlike the Paladin, which can immediately depart after firing, the gun crew of the 777 must first prepare the gun for travel, then a truck must drive to the gun's position before it's hitched onto that truck and both of them drive away. The army states that this so-called displacement time is less than three minutes. However, the displacement process must go off without any problems and the artillery unit must also get clear of the blast area. All of this leaves very little margin for error. However, when it comes to self-propelled artillery, even in their limited numbers, with their heavyweight punch and their ability to rapidly reposition after firing, the Paladin has become a vexing challenge for Russian counter-battery troops. The Paladin has an operational range of 186 miles and a top speed of 38 miles per hour, which is not rapid, but certainly respectable for a weapon of its size. Unfortunately, these large self-propelled guns are very heavy. And this not only complicates their aforementioned air transportability, but it also limits their use where bridges and roads may not be able to take their weight. And this is where the discussion has opened up about a middle ground that exists between the Paladin self-propelled howitzer and the 777 towed howitzer, that is, a truck-mounted howitzer. Truck-mounted artillery is not an entirely new concept, and at first glance it may initially seem a poor man's option but its simplicity, mobility and lower purchase and operating costs are making them an increasingly attractive option. 
In fact, there are already several examples of truck-mounted howitzers in operation around the world, including the French Caesar, Swedish Archer, Slovakia's Zerzuna 2, South Africa's Denel T5-52, the Israeli Atmos 2000, and Ukraine's very own 2S-22 Bodana. Interestingly, the Bodana holds a significant advantage over the Ukrainian army's ex-Soviet guns, as it fires NATO standard 155mm shells, rather than Soviet standard 122mm or 152mm shells, allowing it to tap into foreign ammunition stocks. This is a big plus, considering that Ukraine's domestic industry is poised to produce at least 72 of its own Bodana wheeled howitzers this very year. Similar to the Paladin, truck-mounted howitzers can fire directly from the truck bed without requiring offloading. This reduces displacement time from minutes to seconds. For instance, the Archer, a 155mm wheeled self-propelled howitzer, also designed and manufactured by BAE Systems, can set up in just 30 seconds, fire a shell every 5 seconds for 15 seconds and then prepare for movement in another 30 seconds. This capability allows an archer crew to launch a salvo towards an enemy position up to 25 miles away and then relocate before all three rounds detonate simultaneously, achieving a high momentary effect on target through multiple round simultaneous impact or MRSI. With a firing rate of up to 9 rounds per minute, it remains unclear if any other artillery system can currently match its combination of speed, range and simultaneous impact. That is, a single gun hitting a single target with several shells at the same time. The Archer is currently available on two different vehicle platforms, the Volvo A30D 6x6 and the Rheinmetall HX2, which is an 8x8 configuration, the latter of which offers an operational range of up to 500 miles and an equally impressive top speed of 56 miles per hour both of which far exceed the capabilities of the Paladin. Additionally, the Archer boasts thick armour for a howitzer and it also features radar absorbent paint, radar stealth geometry, infrared stealth along with Saab Barracuda camouflage nets with infrared and radar stealth features, all of which combine to camouflage and conceal its visual and infrared signatures. Setting aside the specifics of the Archer system, for any truck-mounted howitzer, this kind of punch does still come with a trade-off. That is, they can still easily weigh 30 tonnes or more, making them ineligible for helicopter transport. Consequently, they may not be ideal for light infantry and air assault units that often travel long distances by helicopter. However, for army units fielding other types of heavy or medium-weight combat vehicles, which already rely on fixed-wing transport, a truck-mounted howitzer could be just the thing to complement their mobility, enhance their firepower and help keep its gunners alive. In November 2023, Ukraine deployed eight Swedish-supplied Archer howitzers. These units form part of a larger trend of self-propelled howitzers that are now being supplied to Ukraine by various countries. All up, these formidable artillery pieces have swiftly established themselves as among the most effective big guns in the ongoing conflict. And so, while the US Army is not directly engaged in the conflict, it can glean valuable insights from the ongoing war. Notably, on today's battlefield, especially when up against a near-peer adversary, artillery must be nimble to survive, and those vital seconds after each shot is fired can mean the difference between artillery crews making a clean getaway and absolute disaster. Ongoing developments such as extended range modifications for the 777, upcoming rocket assisted long range ammunition and precision projectiles also hold further promise for its future warfare capabilities. This technology will in theory, at least in the short term, allow towed artillery to stay out of range from any heavy counter battery fire. However, if the US Army wants to stay one step ahead of the enemy, setting aside the restart of the M777 howitzer production, it could be argued that mounting guns directly onto trucks is something that it should strongly consider. Of course, the 777 still has its place, but a better spread of capability may be just the thing that's needed in the years ahead. If you're interested in learning about the US vehicle, based on the venerable M1A1 Abrams tank that is helping Ukraine to clear Russian minefields, click here. And if you'd like to learn more about the fearsome A-10 Warthog attack aircraft, 
It has also been requested by Ukrainian forces to help them destroy Russian armoured vehicles, tanks and ground forces. Click here.